The Nothing Phone 2A has been getting a lot of hype lately, and for good reason. At just $350, it packs a 120Hz screen, a very unique Nothing design, and clean software without any bloatware. But the big question on this phone is performance. Nothing has been comparing it to the Nothing Phone 1 in all of their metrics, which, you know, while helpful, what I think a lot of people want to know is how does it compare to the flagship in the Phone 2. So today, we've got a double header, doing both a speed test and a battery test. Now, when it comes to speed, the spec sheet looks mostly the same, with the key difference being that the 2A is powered by MediaTek's Dimensity 7200 Pro, while the Phone 2 is rocking the higher clocked Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, along of course with that $250 higher price point. Whether or not that'll lead to a significant difference though, well, there's only one way to find out. But before we do, I want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor in BetterHelp. So one of the areas that we tend to overlook, just as a species in general, is our mental health. It's not something that we can see, and because we can't see it, we tend to ignore it. But just like an app can drain the performance on a phone or a computer, things like stress and anxiety can be really taxing on the mind. I know I've let anxiety sit there unprocessed in the past, and you know, to keep with the computer metaphor, I've always found it to take away from enjoying life to the fullest since it takes up system resources. And that's where therapy can help. Therapists are trained to listen and give you unbiased advice to help you overcome barriers. And with BetterHelp, after filling out a quick questionnaire, you get connected to a licensed therapist usually within 48 hours. What's really nice about BetterHelp is you can do it completely remotely from your phone or your computer, whether it's through a call, messaging, or a video call to get you the help that you need right from the comfort of your own home. If you're thinking about starting therapy, check out BetterHelp using my link in the description at betterhelp.com slash phone buff or select phone buff during sign up to enjoy a special discount on your first month. All right, we'll kick things off by starting the stopwatches on each phone and then jumping into the first row, where the Phone 2 immediately gets the step over the 2A in Facebook and is also faster in Starbucks. Here in Microsoft Word, each phone has to load up a massive 500 page document, where the Phone 2 just blows right through it, already moving on to Excel, with the 2A taking a bit longer through Word. So, not a great start from the 2A. And with it also taking longer through Excel, it's dug itself a bit of a hole here very early early on in the speed test. In the camera app, both phones were tasked with snapping a portrait selfie and then waiting for the photo to finish processing, where again, the 2A falls a bit further behind. We'll see if the 2A can stop the bleeding here in Snapseed, where each phone has to apply two separate filters to the same high resolution photo and then export it out to storage, where no, it looks like the 2A is significantly slower through Snapseed as well, allowing the phone 2 to already move past the video export task, where we actually had to make it less intensive than usual, reducing the amount of clips in the timeline so that way this one task didn't make things so lopsided, where if we would have left it as is like in our other tests, it would have set the 2A 55 seconds back. But even with the reduced workload, the 2A is struggling here. It's taking significantly longer to export this video than the Phone 2 took, with the 2A taking 19 seconds longer to complete the task, allowing the Phone 2 to pull way ahead with it already working on the last leg of the gaming row, as the 2A is only just beginning. So not exactly what I was hoping to see from the 2A. I mean, it does cost nearly half as much, so I wasn't expecting it to go toe to toe with the Phone 2, but at the same time, I can't help but to feel a little disappointed with the performance so far. But there's still plenty of time in the speed test, and we'll see if the 2A can at least keep itself from falling any further behind. And at least in flip diving, it was able to match the Phone 2's performance. But unfortunately, in going balls, it was slower again, allowing the Phone 2 to finish up with Amazon and complete the first lap in 2 minutes and 3 seconds, which might just open the door for the Phone 2 to lap the 2A. It wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, again, since we're talking about a phone that costs nearly twice as much, but ideally, we don't see that happen here. And if the 2A can avoid any major hiccups in the last row, it probably won't. Of course, the Phone 2 still has to keep all of the apps open and ready to go. And while it was able to do that in our last speed test, this speed test is a bit more intensive, with us adding tasks like portrait selfies in the camera app and a new game. The 2A isn't doing itself any favors here in the last row, with it 
loading every app so far at a slower rate, but with the Phone 2 failing to keep Excel open, the 2A is safe from being lapped, despite taking 46 seconds longer to complete lap number one. The Phone 2 also fails to keep Microsoft Word open, and it's the same story in Starbucks. So we'll see if the 2A's result is any different in the second lap, although given that these phones have the same software or almost the same software, you'd kind of expect it to be the same. We'll go ahead and fast forward the 2A to the finish line, where it also fails to keep the same set of apps open in the background, and because it's slower at reloading those apps, it added another six seconds to the Delta, finishing the entire test 53 seconds later. But the 2A might just have better luck here in the battery test, where it has the advantage of a bigger 5,000 milliamp hour battery compared to the Phone 2's 4,700 milliamp hours. Of course, there's more to battery life than just capacity alone, with the Phone 2 having a display that can ramp itself down to a lower refresh rate, and it may just benefit from the efficiency of its Snapdragon 8 Plus chip. But we'll see if it actually does, with us kicking off the battery test by going on the same one hour phone call. Both phones are within equal distance of the mini cell tower in our lab, and both phones have their screens off for the majority of the test, where 60 minutes into it, the Phone 2 actually does one point better. I was kind of expecting the 2A to do better there, since the screens were off and the 2A does have that bigger battery, but we'll see how things play out here in messaging. I don't know if the Phone 2's display is gonna ramp itself all the way down to 10 hertz that often here, since we are typing on the screens pretty regularly, with only a brief pause in between. But either way, the Phone 2 was more efficient once again, increasing its lead to three points as we work on opening and scrolling through the same set of emails. Just like the messaging test, the displays are going to be the biggest factor here in terms of power drain, but after an hour, the phones perform identically. Although if we're counting, the Phone 2 was technically more efficient given that it has a smaller capacity. But it's this browser test that I'm really interested in seeing, because it's the first test that we're really taxing the CPUs on the phones, and given that the chipset is one of the primary differences here, we'll get to see just how efficient that Dimensity 7200 Pro is. Where 60 minutes of cycling through the same set of websites, the Dimensity was able to keep up with the Snapdragon, with the 2A only doing half a percentage worse. Which is some good news for the 2A. I was afraid that it would fall further behind there, but it was able to handle that browsing task pretty well. Here in Instagram, we're not doing anything too intensive, we're just scrolling through the home feed, where this time, an hour of doing so yields a one point advantage for the Phone 2, which may have had to do with its display being able to ramp itself down between scrolls. But heading into standby, the Phone 2 has a four point lead, despite having the smaller battery. That may change though here in the 16 hour period where the screens are off, with the bigger battery on the 2A potentially helping it out. And that's exactly what we see, with the 2A doing three whole points better in standby, bringing it back within one point as we move on to YouTube. And with us watching the same set of videos with the screens and speakers calibrated to the same exact levels, the 2A might just complete the comeback, since the refresh rates should be capped at 30 hertz here, negating any advantage the Phone 2 has with its lower ramping display. And that's pretty much what happens, with the 2A doing one point better, presumably due to its bigger battery. Meaning we are all tied up as we start working on gaming. Now, this gaming test is different though. We're constantly tapping the screen every three seconds. And you know, while Altos isn't the most processor or GPU intensive game out there, it is still taxing the GPU a bit, where after an hour, the Snapdragon 8 on the Phone 2 helps it do better, putting it back up by two points. Here in Maps, we're simulating navigation by having GPS on each phone turned on, having them actively search for traffic information, and scrolling through the map to simulate driving, where the Phone 2 does better yet again. Although I doubt it'll be able to repeat that here in Spotify, since the speakers are gonna be the biggest factors by far, where that bigger battery on the 2A should help cut down on its lead. But after an hour of listening to music, that doesn't happen, with the 2A only being able to match the Phone 2's performance. Meaning 25 hours into this test at this point, there really isn't a whole lot of a difference between the two. And counter to what the specs would tell you, 
if there is a difference, the advantage seems to be going to Nothing's flagship. Although, after an hour in Snapchat, the 2A does make that difference even smaller. And you know, the good news is both of these phones officially reach the app cycle test, which to me is the new benchmark for top tier battery life. I used to consider any phone that reached Snapchat to be the benchmark, but now we're starting to see more and more phones reach the app cycle, where we're opening up the same set of apps and then closing them in a continuous loop. This is pretty CPU intensive, and it'll give us a good look at how efficient that MediaTek chip is relative to the Snapdragon, where the 2A is able to hold its own, with both phones passing the one hour mark, with the 2A going for one hour and four minutes before it dies, at which point the phone 2 only has 1% left to go, which lasts it just another eight minutes. So there you go, only a slight advantage for the phone 2. And honestly, you can't really go wrong with either, at least in terms of battery performance. Anyways, that is it for me in this video. Thank you for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the very next episode.